So now let's just go through an example to make sure that we really understand this well. Let me just first start by describing this as small a and small b because that's what I did all through. And I'm just going to go through a 16-bit example because I'm, I'm decomposing this into 4-bit units and so it just becomes much easier with 16-bit numbers. So I have to first go through a couple of gates, right? So I'm going to go through a bunch of AND gates in parallel to produce the generate signals. I can also go through a bunch of OR gates in parallel to produce the propagate signals. So going through one set of gate delays is going to give me the corresponding values for G and P, right? So G for these two bits is nothing but the AND of those two values, so I get a 1. AND of 1 and 1 gives me a 1, AND of 0 and 0 gives me a 0, AND of 0 and 1 gives me a 0, and so on. The propagate is nothing but an OR of the corresponding bits. So an OR of 1 and 1 gives me a 1, OR of 1 and 1 gives me a 1, OR of 0 and 0 gives me a 0, OR of 0 and 1 gives me a 1, and so on. Okay, so by going through one set of parallel gates, I produce the GNP values. Right, so all of this took me exactly one gate delay. And a very efficient gate delay because they had only two inputs. Next step is to compute the values of capital P and capital G which is based on this collection of 8 bits, right? The 4 P values and the 4 G values for that 4 bit unit, right? So I have to go back to this equation here. So P0 is this term here. G0 is this term over here, right? So I wish I had reproduced those equations here, but, you know, essentially P0 is small p0, p1, p2, and p3. This is the AND of those four values. So if I AND these four values, I get the result 0. g0 is, you know, small g3. That means the last bit is capable of producing a generate on its own, or it's capable of passing on the carry that might be generated by the previous bit. Or it is p3, p2, g1, plus p3, p2, p1, g0. All right, so if you actually plug all these values in, so if you take these eight values which feed into this equation, you get the result zero again. And, and then you continue doing that, and you continue computing the values of capital G0, G1, G2, and G3, and capital P0, P1, P2, and P3. So how many gate delays did this take? This also took me two gate delays to compute. Okay, and each gate delay was relatively efficient because the most complicated function I was performing was this one over here. Okay, so I was at most dealing with four inputs. Now having done that, I can produce the carries that are coming out of each four-bit unit. Right, so this represents a four-bit unit here, a four-bit unit here, right, which is corresponds to these four bits and these four bits over here. What I'm trying to do is produce the carries coming out of each one of these stages. The carry coming out of here, 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 and here. Okay, and once I've produced all of these carries, right, once I produce the carry that goes in here, I can start computing the actual results of the bits here. Okay, so in some sense, producing the carries is a precursor to computing the result of each one of these bits over here. And what I'm doing is efficiently computing the carries without having to do it sequentially, you know, going from bit 0 all the way to bit 32. I'm essentially doing four bits at a time. So my carries are being produced with these 4-bit jumps. Okay, so now let's look at the carry that comes out of here. Right, so this is referred to as, I think, carry 1, which is nothing but G0 plus P0 times CN. CN over here is 0, right? There's nothing else coming into the very first bit. So this is 0, P0 is 0, plus G0 is 0. So C1 is 0. Now let's look at C2 over here. C2 is G1 plus P1 times C1. Okay, so this is 0, P1 is a 1, and G1 is a 1. So that means this, this set of four bits is going to produce a carry. Then C3 is similarly, it's going to be G2 plus P2 C1 sorry, P2 times C2, and so this is a 1, P2 is a 1, and G2 is a 0, so this is going to produce a carry, so C3 is 1 as well, and then C4 is G3 plus P3 times C3, C3 is a 1, P3 
is also a 1 and this is a 0 so this also produces a carry and that's how I get the result that a carry is being generated out of the most significant bit. So hopefully this example kind of you know walks you through all the different steps. You'll see that to produce the final C4 over here it took a bunch of gate delays right I mean I had to first compute C1, C2, C3 and so on. Okay and so computing C1 required me to go through two gate delays right so now it takes two gate delays to compute C1, takes two more to compute C2, two more to compute C3, and two more to compute C4, right? And so this has still got that ripple carry effect, right? Where you where you produce a carry of the least significant bits, and then it moves towards the most significant bits. But now, because of these abstractions, with every two gate delay, I'm actually jumping ahead four bits. This helped me to go from the carry of the first bit to the carry of the fifth bit and then to the carry of the ninth bit and then 13th and then the 17th. Okay, So that's the reason that we kind of came up with these abstractions. So you'll see that the overall delay is somewhat modest. It's not as bad as the ripple carry adder and we have not increased complexity dramatically. Right, Each stage requires a modest number of gate delays. Right, So to add them all up I had one gate delay here, I had two gate delays here and then four two gate delays so that gives me a total delay of 11 and with the ripple carry adder I had 64 gate delays that I was going through because every single add unit required two gate delays and I was going sequentially through 32 of these okay so you can see that this is much more efficient each gate over here is a little bit more complex because it can have up to four inputs or, or up to five inputs whereas the gates over here require at most two to three inputs, right? So the gates have become a little bit more complex, but you're going through a lot fewer gates sequentially, and this usually results in a much lower execution time than this design over here.